Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com. Here, here once again is in my garage shop. And uh, yeah, I stole my neighbor Chuck's bandsaw again. <laughs> so I had a comment. In fact, the second time that same comment came up in a little over a week saying, how is it again that you set up the miter gauge on the old cast iron bandsaw table to use that for resawing or making straight cuts? And I thought, I covered this already, and I went to find where I covered it, and I mostly just pantomimed it in another video. So I think I owe it to you to show you an actual demonstration of this procedure. Yeah, if you don't own this cast iron table, you might want to watch this anyway. There's still some techniques that apply pretty much to any bandsaw. And if you're watching this and you're inclined to type a comment that says, I've seen videos that say bl bandsaw blade drifting is a myth. We're talking about a shopsmith bandsaw. Shopsmith bandsaws are totally different animals. There's no way to tilt the wheels. The wheels aren't crowned. The blade doesn't run in the center of the wheel. They're different and the blade does drift. So to get started, we're gonna take a piece of scrap wood and we're just gonna draw a straight line that's parallel to an edge. It doesn't matter which edge, but the goal here is to just draw a straight line. From there, we're gonna cut on that line and see if we can keep it straight on the line. And once we are able to do that, we're gonna stop everything and make some marks on the table. So it goes a little something like this. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I'm, I'm off at about a, I don't know, maybe three, five degree angle, something like that. And I'm going to hold that board steady and draw a line on the table. Um, it might help if this table weren't so rusty, but uh, hey, it is what it is. In order to accommodate for the amount of drift we're getting with this blade at this tension, we need to set our fence at, to match that angle. Now, the fence on the uh, uh, earlier model bandsaw with the cast iron table is, in fact, your miter gauge. So the uh, Shopsmith miter gauge is the rip fence for this cast iron bandsaw table. Um, first thing you're going to want to do typically is to just go ahead and remove the, uh, the hold down. That's just going to be in the way when we're using it as a fence. And there is a very large tapered set screw here in the fence bar that locks this in place. But a lot of folks have experienced the same problem, and that is um, when you tighten that down, it, it, it may go so far deep that it doesn't want to back out anymore. It gets stuck. Thank goodness this one is not stuck. So uh, what you might want to do is to be sure to put a piece of paper in here to... Uh, to take up a little bit of space. And uh, we can tear that off so it's not in the way. Now I need to tilt my miter gauge to match that angle that we've marked on the table. And once we've matched that angle, we can tighten the head down. And we can now use that as our rip fence. So pretty much any kind of a straight cut, just a, you know, if we want, in fact, one of the questions was somebody just wanted to basically cut some pieces for inlay. They wanted to be able to, to rip them down to the same size as the kerf they're getting with their bandsaw. So um, it's just a matter of setting the fence the proper distance from the blade and then using the proper blade, uh, resawing the stock that we need. So let's, let's see if we can get this set up. Oh, you know what? That's not much of a fence there. I want to add an accessory board to this to give me a little more support. And so I just have a piece of scrap and... I'm going to attach this with uh, double-sided spec tape. 
This is the, uh, the double-sided tape I use for most of my jigs. Um, this is not the tape I use if I want to have a permanent bond. And we'll just attach that right there. Now we have a slightly taller fence. And let's tighten this down and see if we can cut a thin cut. All right, let's check it out. Gives you a better view. Let's see if we can get you a better view here. So if I were making shaker oval boxes, that would be ready to go through my thickness sander to surface that, and we'd be good to go. Now, for making even thinner material, like, uh, again, if you're just wanting to, to fill in the kerf that it was made by the bandsaw itself, we just need to move the fence a little bit closer to the blade. Now, there, there is obviously a diminishing return here. Um, the teeth are are rather aggressive. They have quite a bit of set to them. Let's give this a try. See if that's eh, still a little bit thicker than my saw kerf here. No, eh, we're awfully close. Eh, we're awfully close. There you go. Yeah, that's not too shabby. I mean, really, that's nice. Um, now, for those of you who think that uh, drift is a myth, again, it's not a myth on this bandsaw, but with either the miter gauge as a fence on the cast iron table or the aftermarket aluminum fence on the aluminum table, drift isn't a problem. We just determine what it is, we accommodate, and away we go. The bandsaw gives us everything we want from it. I do have a few more things I want to share uh, before I return the bandsaw to Chuck. So be sure to check back for uh, the follow-up episode, midweek Q&A I call Stumped. Um, be happy to answer your questions, comments, and cheap shots then. In the meantime, make it a great week.